Hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the INSET 2024 recall session from anesthesia. So this questions from this INSET number 2024 is slightly atypical. I'll tell you the reason why I said like uh, atypical. Yeah, usually like the number of questions are six to eight. And here this time we got like six questions from anesthesia. And if you see the last four years, this is the first time the there's uh, no question per se from oxygen delivery devices. Since the start of INSF, every single paper, there is a question from oxygen delivery device, whether it be um, HFNC or it might be uh, Venti mask, or that question is not there. And there's a, not a question on uh, IV can loss, or there's no question on cathnography. And this time, slide. There is a direct one line of questions have been asked predominantly. We'll see what are the six questions and uh, we'll discuss about this. Another important thing is this time, uh, I question like uh, which is not of your standards, though you know the answer for that, but that question should have been asked in a different way. I'll discuss about uh, this. Okay. So, the first question which of the following propofol, uh, etomidate, ketamine? Sex and cooling. This is a very straightforward question. The IV election agent, which causes temporary adrenal gland suppression, is nothing but etomidate because of its action on 11 beta hydroxylase. So, the adenocortical suppression it causes. And the answer is etomidate. And you see, this has been discussed in our workbook, etomidate. It is more cardio stable agent, no effect on sympathy and balance present. This is where it's been discussed. I do not got the suppression in high doses, it occurs and it is temporary and it inhibits 11 beta hydroxylase and thereby decreasing the cortisol synthesis. The similar question has been there in our uh, question bank also, which is asked a 54 year old male is scheduled for outpatient surgical procedure. The anesthesiologist is considering using etomidate as an induction agent. However, they are aware of its potential adverse effects, which of the following is a significant adverse effect of etomidate that the anesthesia should be cautious about this patient and it's been adenocardial suppression again. So that is all. The beauty of this is like, uh, we got like um, almost like the application of the knowledge, we are able to get all the 100% of the questions from the uh, world book. Then the second question, an young patient with fractures of third to eighth ribs is complaining of pain despite IV analysis. What is the next best management to elevate the pain? See, Plexus block, lumbar epidural, thoracic epidural, and supracarotid. If you see this, for fractured ribs, if they ask what is the best, the best is nothing but intercostal knob block. This we have been discussed. Intercostal knob block from third to eighth ribs, intercostal knob block is one thing which we use very good. Now, the intercostal knob block is not there in the options. Then comes the option of applied, applying the knowledge to what we learned about. Where is the supraclavicular block? Supraclavicular block. So let's come to the celiac plexus block. Celiac plexus block, where do we use at the level of L1 and like that is used for pancreatic cancer and CA pancreas. Pancreas. And if the patient has chronic pancreatitis, it is we use this. And lumbar epidural. We are speaking about the ribs from third to eighth, and lumbar epidural is also your own option. Then supraclavicular block, it is one of the ways like how you can block the brachial plexus. We use it for upper limb surgeries and uh, hand surgeries. So the answer, the remaining is thoracic epidural. By putting thoracic epidural, you can decrease the pain of third to eighth ribs. This is the correct answer. If you see this in our book, in our workbook, the straight at the right back rib line, you can use for trauma and post-hepatic neuralgia and also anything over the, the ribs, interpersonal of blood. That is not the there. The, the, the next question is thoracic epidural. Then we discuss like supraclavicular block is a, a, a type of brachial plexus block. We discuss there's no workbook celiac plexus block. We have discussed like a uh, ticket located at the level of L1 and uh, for painful conditions of upper abdomen, CA pancreas, and chronic pancreatitis. The similar question also has been there, like you know, workbook related to uh, celiac plexus block, upper abdominal pain, where it has been asked and like how it has been given. Then, yeah. and to R of 40 belongs to which generation? First generation supraglottic care device, second generation supraglottic care device, third generation, fourth generation. This is one question, like why I'm saying this, this is. Uh, this is frankly an injustice to be asked a question this way. They can ask Amu 40 belongs to which generation by providing an image. The question, this question being asked without image is an injustice. I'll tell you the reason. There are like many types of LMAs and Amu is a, uh, a company which manufactures that. And Amu again has Aura Gain, Aura 40, Aura 1. So all these things are there. And there are many LMAs, even like I, I, I'm saying it on record, like... Uh, 
most of the postgraduates and even like they don't know each and everything which belongs to the gen which generation. But what we know is one thing: if there is only one port, it belongs to first generation. If it has two ports, they belong to second generation. This we all know about this. So, which is the first generation supraglottic airway device? If you see this, so first generation airway device has a single port. Second generation has two ports. Here, see here. First generation one port, example LMA Classic. Two generation two ports, LMA Prosil. The additional port is for suction. In the last examination, like in the INSET last session, when they asked about AMBU or again, it can easily be identified because it has an image which has two ports. Okay, that can easily be uh, identified right? when the school is it's a second generation supraglottic airway device. Obviously, there is no third and fourth uh, generation. You can rule out this. Then between first and second generation, like uh, as discussed in the sessions, AMBU, R, AMBU has three types. R1, what is R1 and R40? One is like a single use device and like R40 is like you can use, you can auto -play. But you can use up to 40 times. At this AMBU has usually has only one port as discussed. This LMA classic, LMA classic is basically again a first generation LMA flexible. And if you see LMA proceed is a second generation LMA. Here in this, the AMBU R40 belongs to the first generation supraglottic device. And if it is R again, as asked last time, it is second generation. But again, I'm saying you, this is a way above your standards for the reason. They would have asked the same question, but if the image would have been given, then it might be easier for you to uh, answer. Like, unless I'm feeling uh, very sorry for all of you, though you might have got it correct, but still, this is not the way how the question has to be asked in a very competitive examination. Then, though, the uh, question like uh, for the we have asked, we have done the similar questions like uh, LMA Classic, LMA Proceal, the first generation LMA Citus and all, but this is how uh, applying the knowledge. Then very straightforward question, Jackson Reese circuit is most commonly used for neuroanesthesia, pediatric anesthesia, or pediatric anesthesia, cardiac anesthesia. Jackson Reese circuit is nothing but Maples and Jeff circuit. So we know uh, Jackson Reese circuit or JR circuit is most commonly used for pediatric anesthesia, mostly in children less than six years or more, less than 20 kilos weight. This is, um, we have discussed like multiple times, this is a very straightforward question. So which we have discussed in the class also, Matrix and type F, best circuit for children in both spontaneous and controlled meditation used in children less than six years and less than 20 kilos. And again, see the question from the workbook. And anesthesia is selecting appropriate breathing circuit for pediatric patients among the various Matrix and circuit, which one is commonly used in pediatric CACDF and in we have also answered the similar question like uh, alternate names, like uh, what is alternate names? So there also we, we know about this. So this is where like we are touching upon the 100% accuracy. Then comes to the next question. Which of the following is true about resuscitation in children? Compression to breath ratio is 30 to 2 when two rescuers are present. Adenosine is preferably given incautiously. Chest compression should be one third of AP diameter. Adrenaline is given 0.01 milligrams per kg in one each to thousand concentration. We have discussed this. See, which is true. We need one statement which is true. So we know like chest compression to breath ratio is 30 to 2 when two rescuers are present. So remember, we have seen this here. When there are one rescuer, it is 30 to 2. When there are two rescuers, it's 30 to 2 in adults, but your children, it is 15 to 2. We have this case. So this is a wrong statement. That adenosine is preferably given in process. Leave about adenosine. Any drug like we prefer by ID only. If adenosine, in fact, like uh, we prefer to give, like if there's a central line, we prefer to give uh, to central line. And intraocious is a wrong statement. Then chest compression should be one third of epidermis. Here we discuss chest compressions also. In adults, it's five to six centimeters. In children, it is it is 5 centimeters to 4 centimeters. So it is like one third. Like when you see the AP diameter, it's close to 10 to 12 centimeters. One third of this is close to that. This is the correct statement. And adrenaline is given 0 0.01 milligrams per kg. The, this is correct, but not in 1 inch to concentration. It is 1 inch to 10 thousand concentration. When we discuss about adrenaline, we various concentrations in when you're using for local anesthesia, you use in 1 inch to 2 lakh concentration. In the previous examination, they have asked about rather than 1 inch to well, 2 lakhs, they had given 1 inch to 1 lakh, so that is it. It's not 1 in 1000 concentration, it is 1 in 10,000 concentration. We have to answer like uh, similar things, this 30 to 15 ish to questions we have answered 
in our uh, question bank also direct assimilating questions. The similar thing like usually they would have asked the other way. The most important change regarding the pediatrics is actually the respiratory rate. This is like 20 to 30 per minute in children and infants. This is the most important change in the ACLS guidelines like I'm sorry, BLS, BCLS guidelines of 2020 AHA guidelines. So, so this is a question which was asked in 2020, in fact, um, and 2021. This time they asked me slightly a different way. Again, a question from um, cardiovascular resuscitation is uh, uh, inevitable. Always it happens. Then comes, again, this is an, another question like which is there similarly in our um, app, the QBank, where we are touching about the compression depth, the respiratory rate, and compression so all. It is based on others and the explanations we have about the killed children. Also. Then the last question, which of the following is false statement about the event training? Don't forget, like they're asking about the false statement. So you need that one statement, like which is a false statement, and you can get all the things correct. So redistributed to adipose tissue and muscle. Yes, this is a true statement where the all IDM sticks, in fact, like the redistributes, like and thyroid has some major redistribution, it distributes 90% redistribution. And achieves maximum concentration in brain by intravenous injection. The name is they are intravenous induction agents. And they have arm brain circulation of like 15 seconds to 30 seconds for various drugs. And obviously, the name itself there. The name itself says it's a common sense. Intravenous induction agents. So there's a true statement. And maximal excretion by kidneys. We'll come back to this in a second. Then lipid soluble. Lipid soluble, all IV induction agents for per se is like a lipid soluble. But only then they can go on and act in the brain. In fact, inhalation agents also. So it's a tight statement. Then, even if you don't know any of these things, you know about this maximal excretion by kidneys. Kidneys. We have discussed, like when we compare the things, like we have seen, thiobetone prophylactic ketamine, the metabolism we discussed, thiobetone metabolism is in liver, it hold 100% and propofol 80% liver and 20% extra fatty, and ketamine and ketamine again in liver. So there's no way about uh, the kidney here. Even if you know this is the wrong statement, then you will get the answer correct. Even if you are not sure about A, B, and D, you can still get the question correct. Okay. So again, we have done, uh, so there's a question like, uh, solid thyroid is classified as ultra short acting IV induction agent in clinical practice. What is the primary physiological mechanism for ultra short duration of action? We have rapid absorption, metabolism, redistribution, excretion, okay? Redistribution we had done. This is the direct question from our feedback. So this is how the questions have been written. And I'm very happy to say that out of the total six questions asked from anesthesia directly from workbook, like uh, five out of six. The reason why I said like five out of six and apply application from workbook content six out of six is we know the concept of uh, first generation and second generation supraglottic gateway devices. But the thing is, if the image would have been given, then it would have been six out of six here also. Similarly, direct from question bank, we have five, so five out of six and the application from question bank content, we are touching upon 100%. The work the book has been meticulously drafted and the cure question bank is completely curated by the faculty where we are able to touch uh, by God's grace, God willing, 100% and uh, with all our efforts to get the things done. And uh, these are the six questions asked from Anastasia. Despite the questions not being asked, the important things for your upcoming need, PG examinations, or minus it, like whatever it is, like uh, you will get a question usually from touching from malignant hyperthermia, Capnography monitoring, sugar maldics, and uh, IV cannulas, and most important, the oxygen delivery devices. As I tell you, this is the after nine exams, this is the first time you are not getting a question from oxygen delivery devices. Okay, um, that's all, guys. I wish you all the best. And I know, like, uh, except that I still. Emphasizing the point, if the image is given, like you might have got the thing correct, and it's a gamble for that um, supraglottic airway device expression, but that's fine. And uh, uh, wish you all the best, and uh, wishing to interview a few of you after the innocent results. And, and uh, all the very best, and good luck for the upcoming examinations. Have a great day.